<laughs> in the, in the crimping journey, I've been like really diligent about hangboarding like all the time. I don't, I, I really, my like pseudoscience answer is just like, you need to be constantly telling, like giving your body stimulus that it, it needs to be crimping and like doing it on the wall only for me doesn't seem to be a recipe for success. I usually get hurt. I think that like having those having days where like I only hangboard or I only lift and hangboard like let's like the, there's no velocity with a hangboard exercise you're just statically loading your hands and I I change up what type of hangboarding I'm doing a lot um, of the time uh, uh, mostly doing bilateral hangs but whether I'm doing like I I mean I listen to people on this podcast and I read I read Ned Haley's book and I've I've done things that Matt Fultz tells me to do and things that Bill England tells me to do. And it doesn't seem to really matter too much as long as you're like changing it up enough mm. and, I, and have done it for long enough. Like I remember when I was in college, I like was wanted to start hangboarding and I talked to Will England because he was working at the gym at the time. And I was like, what should I do? And he's like, he's like, honestly, it doesn't matter. It just means that it, it just matters that you like never stop. Mm. Like you're going to, you're you're gonna get good at this in like eight years. I was like, I was <laughs> yeah. like, I was like, fuck. I was like, fuck. <laughs> I was like, God damn it! Like, I want to climb hard now, and he's like, you're not gonna climb hard for a long time. I was like, I was like, okay. And, yeah, and yeah. I, I mean, then that's like what worked though. It's like it's been like nine years since I probably had that conversation with Will, and I wow. like more or less haven't like stopped hangboarding. Um, do, uh, the, do you always do it a certain number of times a week or do you just kind of go from one program to the next and it, like are you doing it out here on a on a climbing trip i i like i use the it's the flashboard to like warm up in the morning or like warm yeah warm up when i start climbing and i haven't been like hangboarding while i'm like out here because i feel like there's just so much i'm, I'm climbing so yeah, much yeah. Yeah. but like i and i usually like rule of thumb is like i at least hangboard once a week um and then as I'll like cycle in getting up to like more than that, maybe up to like, I don't think I, in my head, I don't go above like two or three times a week, but in reality, like I use the hangboard to warm up and some of my hangboard warmups could be like nine year old, like nine years ago could have been a workout for me. Mm. So take that with a grain of salt. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'm quite like, at Ned Fahaley level, like he was saying that he like hangboards for like an hour or something. And I was like, that's some crackhead. Like that's, <laughs> I was like, that sounds like a terrible idea. Um, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to remember. Yeah. He's got a cool approach. He like, he, I, he, he always alternates through different things that, that he's doing. He always has like a mix of stuff going on and alternates through programs and stuff. Well, and I need to like walk back what I said because I like read his book and part of what I think got me so close to doing my crimp project in Colorado was to like do some of the things he said. Like I, I, I did those like longer duration heavy hangs, like the 20 second long hangs, which is just like you can't do them. I don't think I can do them for more than like four or six weeks and then I need to like take a break because mm. I, I get like deep fatigue from that. But that helped a lot and he also was said that like he would like do a head like he would like do a hangboard workout before he would go to his project and i remember being like you're gonna do like a strength workout before you go and try and crimp on rock and then i tried it out and it helped a ton like my fingers mm. were like ready to go yeah they were like ready to go and i also felt like sometimes when you're actually projecting and you're giving like you're giving bottom burns like you're only going to give maybe 10 of them if you're like a stud, probably less for me. And that's not actually like that much climbing. Mm -hmm. So knowing that you're going to get that stimulus, that training stimulus of like, oh, like I'm going to like get these reps in and I know this is going to make my fingers stronger. I feel like that gate, like that made me feel like I was not wasting my time when I went projecting, which was kind of nice. Mm -hmm. Hey friends, I'm interrupting my own video to tell you about Rumple. Fall is here. That means it's time to get cozy and nothing is cozier this fall season than the Sherpa puffy blanket from Rumpel. As if the original puffy blanket wasn't enough, 
The Sherpa puffy blanket combines impossibly soft Sherpa fleece with their original puffy blanket design. As you can see, I live in a van and the Sherpa puffy blanket has been ideal for staying warm on these crisp fall nights. I've been sleeping with this thing every night and it is literally the best. It's almost too cozy. I absolutely love it. It's perfect for staying warm at the boulders or at the crag during the fall season. Great for camping and just great to have around the house. So cozy up and head over to rumple.com slash nugget and use code nugget at checkout to save 10% off your order. That's 10% off your first order when you go to rumple.com slash nugget and use code nugget at checkout. Enjoy the rest of the video. And as you like, I think <clears throat> all of it really just scales with where you you're at in your climbing because if you're new to climbing and you haven't hangboarded that much then hangboarding before you go and try your project is not that good of an idea but i'm like uh, almost like 20 years into climbing and i've hangboarded for like almost 10 of them and so my body can just take like it's adapted to a lot um and so having a hangboard workout actually just like isn't that much load if you keep it short enough and before your project mm -hmm. like you're not really doing that much work mm -hmm. you yeah relative to like where you're at now yeah yeah i know that <clears throat> you just said that you've like tried to tons of things they all kind of worked but um what are do you have like Go do you have go-tos? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I've you heard, know. I've heard I this. Yeah. The go-to, <laughs> I think, oh, okay. I do, I like repeaters. I, I switch up whether it's like the 10 on, 10 off or like 10 on, 5 off, 5 on, 5 off, um, 7 on, 3 off, like all depending on what types of problems I'm trying. I feel like if it's like really endurancy i'll go for something where it's like less hang time or more hang time less rest um and i'll add weight to make me like to make i i'm, I'm usually always doing like 10 hangs per set and then i'm usually trying to like fail somewhere in the ninth or tenth rep like hang mm. um and i and that's I'll, like, a lot that's a lot of reps yeah and i'll i'll like usually yeah and two hands two, hand? two hands yeah i'll i usually will try and do like four to six weeks of something similar like something more intense than just like a repeater like i think of the repeater as more of like building stamina in some way and i think of like there are like max hangs whether they're bilateral or with one hand or like the long duration max hangs that ned Fahaley talked about I'll like work in those like once, maybe twice a week for like a, a four or six week cycle. And then I'll, I'll work and then I'll deload from that for a while. Like I get, I honestly get really stressed near the end of like the four to six week cycle of like starting to work in some like heavier hangs. Cause I'm just like, my tendons have been like stretched for so many times over this. I know that like in the long term, it's what's needed to make them get thicker, but like, and I usually like start feeling a little fatigued, especially on the board. Um, at, like as I get to the end of one of those cycles where I'm really hitting the finger strength uh, he heavy and I don't, maybe I'm just like a stressy guy. Maybe that's just like part of being like the mathematician. I'm like calculating in my head. I'm like, oh, I don't know how many more like, like things I have in my fingers, you know, like I, maybe this is like when they pop. Uh, <laughs> Some of my buddies have asked me to like write them like a training plan or something like that for a few weeks for a, a period to like get their get themselves a little bit stronger and the thing that i usually tell people to try if they haven't done a lot of they've done some hangboarding like they've done repeaters and they would like to start trying something else i just tell them what will england told me which is there's this you do five hangs six on ten off and you do it usually in half crimp mostly and if you want to add in like full crimp or open hand crimp like i you you can and i you just at progressively add more weight like throughout the month and like eventually i i, I that seems to be like a really good 
that's the one that I return to the most. Mm. I multiple sets or just usually around five sets. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, and I usually do like two or three of those in half crimp, and then one or two of those in open, like three finger drag or four finger drag or full crimp, like depending on what I've been working on. Um, but mostly in the half crimp position. Mm -hmm.